What's up? It is Sam here, and tonight I wanted to bring to you something very special. So I just finished up the research on the California primaries based upon the YouTube search volume for each candidate that's running for presidential nomination for the Democratic Party. And I stacked ranked them based upon who's actually searching for them in this state on YouTube and on Google, the two biggest sites in the planet. Uh, so I wanted to get into that, and then I also wanted to touch on the results versus real, clear politics and what they say the uh, the winners are and what, what, what position that they have them ranked on based on polling data to see if there's any discrepancy between reality and what's actually reported, right? We want to understand that. So with that being said... What's good? My name is Sam, and for those of you who are uh, returning, what's good? <laughs> um, all right, so let's get into this. What we did is we pulled data from Google Trends based on, and this what this does is it aggregates all of the YouTube and Google searches. So anytime somebody searches on Google or YouTube, they track that. And then what you do is you look for that search term. So you just punch in, as you see here, I've punched in the candidates' names. So we search for the candidates' names over the past 12 months, as you can see this drop down, in California, right? To try to understand the essence of what is actually happening in California versus like what the talking heads or the legacy media players are talking about, right? We want to actually understand what's happening, not just like listen to somebody pontificate. And so I looked at the 12 month and we ranked them one through 11 with the first being the highest amount of search volume for their name. And what we did is we looked at the average, right? So in this scenario here on YouTube search volume in the 90 day period, we see out of these candidates at the top, we see that. Gabbard is ranked number one and Elizabeth Warren is number two. So I have to go through this process to figure out who is actually number one out of all 11 candidates. And we do that on here for that the, all three of these periods, the 12 month, the three month, and the one month. And I stack rank them one through 10 in each one of these time periods. And then we take an average of those three. So we take 25% from the 12 month, 25% from the three month, and 50% from the 30 day, because I believe the most recent data also holds some of the most valuable and relevant data uh, to what is happening in politics. So that's why that has a bigger rank, bigger overall weighting in the average of these. And we took all of this data from the YouTube search volume and the Google search volume in each one of these time periods with all these people ranked and we put it into a spreadsheet and this is what it looks like. So we have uh, the overall ranking. We're going to run through the top five here. Bernie Sanders is number number one. Now this is super interesting. Uh, Andrew Yang and Ms. Gabbard are tied for number two. So that is super interesting in California. Um, then we have rounding out four and five is Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. So let's dive into the data a little bit to just get a better idea of what's happening, right? So if we take a look here, this is the ranking on um, Google here from the 365 day, the 90 day, and the 30 day. And as we can see that Andrew Yang, um, we'll just go over here and highlight Andrew Yang, Tusley, and we'll just see that these are the people that are moving. So we can see that Andrew was ranked fifth, then jumped up to second, and then he lost some ground over the past 30 days to fourth. Uh, Kamala Harris has just been, just been getting worse and then leveling out, right? She was ranked number one at the 12 month, uh, and then sixth for each of the preceding time periods. Uh, Amy, uh, enough said. Uh, Sanders is also toying around with going back and forth, uh, moving from a two to one to two. Biden, uh, Biden, so this is interesting because you can't really tell if you only have these three data points and they're going up and down together. You don't know which direction somebody's going. But 
if you believe that the past has some predictive value of like what's going to be happening in the future from a trend standpoint, um, we, we have a trend here with Joe Biden. That is, he is losing ground uh, in California. And uh, I would expect that if he can't garner more attention, that he's probably going to be out of the top five relatively soon if this continues. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to have an update video on this in a couple of weeks. So make sure you press that subscribe button and that thumbs up button. It really does help out the channel. So uh, next we have Elizabeth Warren. She's also gained ground and then kind of leveled out. Uh, this, which was super interesting, the biggest mover we have here is Miss Gabbard. And she went from sixth down to first. Um, we can see which direction Julia's headed to probably dropping out. Uh, same thing with Amy. Tom Steyer is an interesting fellow. Uh, he is also gaining an interest. He wasn't in the debate in September, and he was in the last debate, and he's already went from the 11th overall, so like last place, down to 7th in just since having the debate um, of this most recent in October. So that's kind of interesting. That was all on Google. The next is the same exact thing, but it's on YouTube. So we're just running through. Pete is just not, I didn't even mention Pete over there. Uh, Yang is number one across the board on this. So Andrew Yang is number one when it comes to interest of attention on YouTube out of all the other candidates. Uh, he's uh, number one just across the board. Kamala Harris has also predicted through um, the Google search volume is losing. Uh, my phone just turned on because I said Google. <laughs> um, the, is losing ground pretty quickly. Uh, Amy actually improved a little bit. I think she actually just started a YouTube channel. If you follow along with my content, you probably know that Amy or Amy didn't have uh, a YouTube channel a number of months ago, and uh, now her YouTube channel is live and she's putting out content. So uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. I didn't look up to see the creation date for the channel, but when I first did the YouTube rankings uh, for the national, um, this what we're looking at is California, but when I did it for a national level, uh, if you want to check that out, go back to the channel. Uh, but that. Uh, was a very, very interesting to take a look at some of that kind of stuff. Anyways, let's jump back into it. Um, Joe Biden is also, again, he's got the same trend here. So when you, you got the two biggest sites in the world who both say that like over the past year, um, he it looks like Joe Biden is losing ground. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Warren, again here, she's actually gaining at a substantial rate, too. She's moved up three spots. But, again, Miss Gabbard went from sixth down to seven, second. So she's, even over the past 90 days, uh, she's just dominated uh, overall. And she's tied with Andrew Yang here, right? So that's kind of interesting. This is the overall ranking now. This is where we take the average of the Google ranking and the average of the YouTube ranking. We take 50-50 weighting from each one of those, right? And that's where we came up with this overall, where um, Ms. Gabbard is tied with Yang at number two. And then this is the super interesting part. So what I did is I compared my ranking to Real Clear Politics. Now, what Real Clear Politics does is aggregate polling data from different companies. And if you want to check out like the data on the polling companies, um, I dive into some of these actual polls and you see that the sample size is like 600 people versus like what we're doing based on search volume of millions of searches. Like it's just insane. Uh, to People think this is the best way to <laughs> try to understand what the fucking American public is thinking about. It just blows my mind. It's 2019. Let's Come on. Uh, anyway, so what I did is I took their ranking here, right, based on the average of these polls over here, and I put that up against our ranking here. And so we get to see this over here is the margin uh, between my ranking, like based on the real reality versus uh, the, the polling data, right? And we see that 
we have the biggest discrepancy from the understanding of the polling data versus reality when it comes to Miss Gabbard. They have her placed at number 10 right now when in reality she's number two. So that's kind of interesting. There's a bunch of people where it's off by two and three spots. Uh, the next biggest one is Andrew Yang. Uh, they have him at number six. And we've got him at number two. Uh, so uh, that's kind of interesting that they're off on some of the people that are outside of the establishment. That's kind of interesting to me, right? Uh, so uh, that is actually just a very interesting observation. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. That the two people coming from outside the establishment um, are underranked when it comes to the old way of doing things. I guess that would be... be the exact reason why, but uh, that is kind of interesting. Um, like two candidates, like Andrew Yang, a, biz a businessman and uh, not a politician, and then Miss Gabbard, which I don't believe is thought about as being part of the establishment, partially to to her stance on things and her age. That, unlike you know Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and. Joe Biden, those are like fucking, <laughs> I mean, they are the establishment. So uh, I think that it's kind of telling that the old way of doing things um, has them ranked a lot worse than reality. So that was kind of interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. So we see right here, this is what happens if you leave a comment below and you use the hashtag Stolt. I may be able to get to your comment and respond to it at the end of one of these videos. So that is exactly what you want to do. If you're going to leave a content comment and you want my response on it, put hashtag Stolt in your comment because that's the easiest way for me to find it when there's a lot of comments on, uh, on a video. Okay. So we've got Rhett. Uh, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, here we go. While I find, I'm going to read his comment and then we're going to respond to it. While I find this approach interesting and for sure, and for sure, not to disregard completely, one has to account that it is skewed towards younger folks, more than likely, yes. And we're about to talk about that in a second. Uh, data shows that older people are more likely to vote than millennials. Okay, first of all, uh, awesome, awesome comment. Thank you so much. Second, uh, in, for, in your first sentence, while I find this much interesting, and for sure not to disregard completely, one has to account for the skew to younger folks. Yes, you know how you account for the younger folks is that you look at the data that according to Pew Research, the uh, number of people who are going to be represented in the um, election in 2020 in terms of age and the percentage of the total that they are going to be, the age is 18 to 53, which is everybody that is not a baby boomer and older is going to represent around 65% of the total overall vote in 2020. So where do people that are younger tend to spend more of their time? Online. Uh, so what we're doing is actually trying to understand reality, and that is reality come 2020. Like, the other thing, uh, data shows that older people are more likely to vote than millennials. I would love to see this data, like plug it in down below, because what I looked at the data, it showed that there was record turnout for uh, millennials in the 2018 elections. Um, so the data that I'm seeing is, and, and, and like there could be other data pointing in another direction, right? It easily could be. Let me know in the comments or whatever, but... It looks like, based on what I've been seeing, that we're about to have the most uh, uh, engagement we've ever had in an election to date in the history of the country. With the amount of information that is coming out around every single person that, and what they say, and with the amount of desire for consumption like people want to pay attention to what's going on and there's never been an outlet to really actually understand the data it's always like coming through a fucking telephone right when who have you ever played the game telephone where you talk into somebody's ear and then you whisper it in their ear and then they tell the next person and you go along like this and this, the message that originally started 
by the time it gets to the 7th or 8th or 10th or 15th person, is completely distorted from the original message. And that is what happens when the data is gone through 1,400 times before some talking head on television tells you about it, right? Like, it's distorted greatly. Uh, I think that is clearly, clearly evident in a lot of ways. Now, let's go on to this comment. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to talk so much on this. But this is accounted for by polling agencies and statistics say that you only need a small fraction of a sample to make good predictions about the electoral let. Furthermore, search results don't necessarily mean positive interest. For example, if a candidate, yes, okay, we know. Uh, so, first of all, let's go this again, line by line. Uh, this is accounted for by people, by polling agencies and statistics that say uh, you need a small fraction. Okay, so uh, I actually have an MBA in finance and accounting, and I have a CFA, which is a very, very quant-heavy designation. Think of like a CPA for accounting, but like three to four times harder than a CPA exam, um, and very, very quant-heavy. So, I mean, I've studied statistics for a number of years, and... That is what we're taught, yes, in terms of gathering enough data to be able to use that to be able to predict uh, inferences about the population preferences about something, right? That's what we're taught. I understand that's what we're taught. But when you look at statistics versus what people are actually searching for in a country or state, I mean, like, this is people saying, hey, Joe Biden. Elizabeth Warren and typing it in on their keyboard, I understand because I was taught the same exact thing to me, and, I, and you do you, but to me, the people who are actually putting in the data tell a more accurate story than what polling statistics say are the results. But that's my preference. You do you. Like, and there's no judgment here at all. I think this is an amazing discussion that we need to get out to more people. And if you appreciate what we're doing here and got any value out of this, share this video with somebody you think may get value out of it. Okay, let's jump in here. Uh, for example, if a candidate is something stupid, right? Then they're, they, they, what he's going to say is the interest in that candidate is going to spike. But let me talk about how... Having interest is important, whether it's positive or negative, a lot of the time, is that if you have several million people f paying attention to what you're doing, even if it may be for a negative thing, um, think about it from a business standpoint. You're able to garner, you can, you know what I mean, as long as it's not crazy over the board, but you can garner a lot of attention, which allows you to do a lot more things in business, whether that's finding more deals, getting the attention of people you need to get attention to to achieve whatever you need to achieve, or just getting more exposure for your business that you can leverage into the future. Um, or the same thing applies in business, but you could take that framework and push it to an objective like trying to run for president. So e that could be just meaning you get more uh, uh, invites to go on talk shows because of negative interest to better clarify what's going on. Remember, you have to be good. So if you're not good, it's just going to continue to get worse, Joe Biden. Uh, but you have to be like, you have to be authentic. You have to be fucking genuine. You, like, you can't be a fucking perceived as a liar who doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm not saying that's the case with Biden. I'm just saying. Um, anyways, let's move on. So, overall, I think uh, it's a nice way to look at things, but there are some important factors omitted which should be mentioned, at least some of a disclaimer or so. Um, I do think that would be an accurate statement to put on the polling data for sure, uh, 100%. I think... Uh, honestly, over the next, you know, five years, it's going to be like looked back upon as like what that's actually how you use the data from polling companies, you know, and whether that's a five or 10 year thing, I think what I'm doing here is it's just like a uh, hundred times more accurate representation. And I think looking back on it, it'll be like, holy shit, you actually used polling data, the antiquated methods to understand what's 
going on when you had all this data in front of you. That's like honestly what I believe is going to be the future of what's going on. So I just wanted to jump down to here. This is the last comment. Ram, thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for your support. Leaving a hashtag, uh, Stolt. Don't forget to subscribe. Jump over to TikTok and say what's good. Thank you. Peace out. Fuck out.